Can you guys guys hear me well? Okay, so I will I will take you back to Banana APM. So uh, just talking about banana. I don't know how do I explain banana plant or banana leaf, banana tree. So anyway, we call whatever we like banana tree or banana plant. So before I start my presentation, I would just like to uh, introduce a few terms. Like uh, we have a banana plant or tree and we have a trunk, main trunk, yeah? So we call it as a pseudo stem. It's not main stem, it's a pseudo stem. And for leaf, we call as a leaf lamina. And the, then the small portion which joins with, which joins leaf lamina to the pseudo stem is the petiole. And the main true, uh, true stem is underground, which we call corm. So corm, the, and, the, and, the, and the roots will develop from the corm. So we have a corm, a new term, and pseudo steam, petiole, and the leaf lamina. So today I will be talking about some pests and insects and the diseases of banana. So yeah, I have a list of some diseases and pests. The first one is BBTV and so on, banana weevil, burrowing nematode, banana trips, Zika toga disease, and some caterpillars and the Panama wool disease. So among these, only BBTV is the economically important disease or uh, is, is transmitted by aphids. So economically important disease in banana. So if you have banana bungee top virus and you lose some money, apart from th those other pests and diseases are not so economically important, but they are there and they, they also cause damages in banana. So the first one is banana weevil. The scientific name is kind of a little bit difficult, Cosmopolitis sordidus. It's also called banana root borers. It's mainly best of banana and the sugarcane. Now we don't have sugarcane here in Kauai, so they, they only kind of feed banana now. So as you can see in this slide, these are the adults of banana. They are not too big. It's, looking at this picture, you might think uh, they, are, they are the bigger ones. So it looks like it's around two centimeters in length, very small. So the adults of these weevils will lay egg on leaf seed. They can lay egg anywhere uh, outside of the soil. They are the soil pests, soil weevil, but they will lay egg outside of the ground, above ground. So they will lay egg in the leaf seed, pseudo stem and corms as well. Then the eggs will hatch into grubs, like these kind of grubs. See, you can see. And they will feed anywhere they are, they are hatched. So they normally then, they will normally go into the corn where they feed, tunnel, make a tunnel, and make the root system very weak. And it, it causes the plants very weak and they can be blown away by the slight winds also. So normally, no chemical insecticides are recommended, but when you, when you do a rogging, rog, not rogging, desuckering, when you take out the suckers or when you uh, thin out your banana mat, what you do and plant it again in somewhere else, you, you need to remove those adults and the grubs physically. So if you, uh, take out the keikis from the mat, and you have you 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 see the grubs. You will take out the grubs physically to again to plant in the another location. So the another one is burrowing nematode. So these two uh, pests are soil soil pests. That's why they came one after another. So the, the nematodes are very tiny, very microscopic. You cannot see by the eyes and it's a common pest of banana and orna ornamental plants. So most importantly, this uh, burrowing nematode, rhodoph rhodophilus similis, rhodophilus similis is a quarantine pest. That means this nematode pest is not so damaging, but one pest is enough because it's a quarantine pest. If we had to uh, export banana plants with the roots and the soil, it needs to go through quarantine. 
So, but we are not exporting banana plants with the roots and the soil anywhere in the U.S. mainland because nobody grows banana commercially in the U.S. mainland. So, <clears throat> what these worms? They are very tiny worms, microscopic, and they have a stylet. It's a it kind of like an injector. So they feed on the root, and the root root have a root co, root will have a necrotic symptoms, which uh, which looks like a uh, decaying black. So what it does is it, it it weakens the root system, and for after many years, in three, four, five years, what happens is that the tree will tilt. The root system will be very weak. And the tree will tilt in a in like a inclined position, and one time and one day, these tree will topple down. It it went into the went to the to the ground. So it's that's why it's also called toppling disease of banana. So normally for these two pests, uh, banana weevil and banana nematodes, uh, what it was the treatment is hot water treatment. So this is a step of banana macro propagation. Also, it's the way of multiplying banana plants. There is a micro propagation, which will be tissue culture. Amjad will talk about uh, micro propagation and macro propagation. I think uh, like a, a two, three, three around three, three, four years ago, I think uh, Emily and uh, us uh, gave a workshop on banana macro propagation. How to do banana macro propagation? So, so there is a step of disinfecting banana banana plant so what we do this is mainly for the this, the killing banana weevil and nematode so we dip the banana comb in the hot water for 30 seconds 30 seconds to kill banana weevil larvae and eggs and the nematode So another important, not so important, but his best is banana rust trips. Uh, so trips usually feeds on the young succulent tissue and the flower buds. So <clears throat> the, the, you will use the, the, this trips will find trips damage on the pseudo stem. As you can see, there is a P-shaped notes in the pseudo stem, uh, not so pseudo stem. This is a petiole which joins leaf lamina to the pseudo stem. You will see V-shaped notes in the uh, patio and <clears throat> as i say these uh, uh, trips will feed when the uh, fruits are tiny so you will see this is the uh, when the fruits are uh, small these two banana is touching together yeah so the trips will feed on these outer surface then as the fruits will in grow, uh, increase in size these will increase in size as well so the, the another thing with the trips is trips has a rasping and sucking mouth part. Rasping means they will scratch the, the the outer outer layer of the tissue. So it will be a little bit uh, uh, what do you call it? roughen. That's why it gives the bronzing appearance, as you can see here. And then they will make a puncture, then suck the sap from the tissue. So normally they they will feed on the uh, developing fruit when they are very tiny. As, as the fruit development occurs, it enlarges. These uh, bronzing appearance will also increase. It will increase in size and it appears like this. So this is a trips, very small, but can be seen by, by naked eye. So th this damage looks bad, though it's unmarketable, such fruits are still edible. There are a couple of other banana trips also. There's a banded greenhouse trips and a Hawaiian flower trips. As I said, they will uh, rasping, like a scratch the, the tissues of the fruits. That's why you will see a silvering scars in the, in the banana fruits for the banded greenhouse trips. And for the Hawaiian trips, you will see the pimples. So that's a, <clears throat> abnormal growth from the, the tissue after they 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 they, they uh, scratch or they uh, puncture the leaf tissue 
So this is a general uh, uh, TRIPS life cycle. So the, the adult female will lay the egg inside the leaf tissue. That's the very, that's why this is very, that TRIPS are difficult to control. The first instar and the second instar larva will be uh, outside in the, uh, like a fruit, the uh, flowers or in the leaf or in the stem, wherever they lay egg around there. And uh, uh, these are the other stages which will go inside the ground, inside the soil. They will pupate inside the soil. And they emerge as an adult. The adults are mostly attracted to flowers. So these are the first instar and second instar larva are mostly in the leaf and the pseudo stem, wherever they lay, lay egg. They are, they, these are under the ground pupae and the pupae, and adults will be mostly in the banana flower. So to control trips, what normally done in the larger farm is they will bag the uh, <coughs> banana flower. As soon as the banana, the flower initiation occurs, they will bag the banana flower. So they, they have a, there is a testing, uh, there is a research on different colors of, uh, uh, plastic bag. So blue plastic bag is found to be better than other colors. So, so after, before bar, bar bagging, there is a, uh, you can spray with the oil or soap to, to, to kill the trips, any trips inside. So you will, you, the, the, the bottom end of the bag is open. So up until the banana fruit is developing you will keep this open so after that these banana flower will drop the fruits banana flower or fruits will drop then after that you will cut this flower because this flower the remaining flower will have trips so you need to cut this flower and tie the tie the banana and tie this plastic bag so that's how uh, the trips where wherever trips is the problem the big problem they will manage trips by this this method. And by bagging a banana, a banana bunch, the, uh, <clears throat> the development of banana and ripening is also uh, enhanced. It, it, the banana will be ripe in a few, uh, uh, faster than without uh, banana, without bagging. And if the trips is even more problem, what you do is you will apply granule insecticide in the soil. So I don't think we have a that much pro trips problem here on Kauai or in Hawaii. So this is a disease, a fungal disease called Sigatoga disease. Also, there is a two kinds of Sigatoga disease, black Sigatoga disease, also called black leaf stick disease. And there is another disease, yellow cigatoga disease. So black cigatoga disease is prevalent in the tropical area. And the yellow cigatoga disease is mostly occur in the colder, cooler, cooler part of the, uh, in, the, in the temperate climate, not here. So we have, we have black cigatoga disease here. So as you can see in the black cigatoga disease, on the other side of the leaf, you will see these Chlorotic flecking. Chlorotic means blackened, which is like a dead tissue. Chlorotic fleckings on the underside of the leaf, which develops, then it becomes elong elong elongated. It it not circle. It gets extended, elongated, and and on the upper side of the leaf, then you will see like this. These chlorotic uh, streaks will be surrounded by the yellow yellowing tissues. Yellowing tissues. So this, these streaks will increase in size, reducing photosynthesis and further providing inoculum. So what happens is so these uh, leaves will uh, have a, will die, drop down, and these will provide inoculum through the, uh, through the splash of rain. Or if these leaves fall down in the ground, the splash of rain, through the splash of rain, the fungus, fungal inoculum will be uh, again spread to the, the upper leaf. So how do we control this? 
So there is a, 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 a method called sanitary leaf remo removal. So banana plant can, uh, is, uh, so banana can, the banana the plant fruit and fruiting is good enough when there is a three to, three to five leaves is good enough for banana growth and fruiting. So normally, periodically, you cut the leaves, banana leaves, the disease, or even undisease, you just cut the leaves, keep the three to five banana leaves per banana plant. And uh, another um, method is also called mat management, or you do desuckering. So you have a banana plant, there will be uh, cakes coming out from the uh, banana, around the banana tree. So you desucker. So normally desuckering is recommended once in a six month. And as soon as the mother plant uh, gives the fruit, banana, banana bunch, you harvest and you cut down the tree, then maintain three to five banana cakes per mat. So in that way, you provide good aeration, aeration uh, in the banana mat and a good use of fertilization and reduce the fungal inoculum so that you, you get uh, black cigar tuber disease. Uh, you, you get reduced uh, incidence of black cigar tuber disease. And there are some uh, resistant varieties in the banana. Dwarf Brazilian or apple banana is more prevalent than Cavendish. And some other varieties which has multiple uh, resistant genes that perform better than single resistant gene. So it's like Pisang Awak. This is Indonesian variety. I think Mysore, Indian variety, are more resistant to black Sika toga disease than other varieties. And when we cannot do these cultural control methods, and we, what we do is we will spray fungicide. So there are lots of fungicide labels for black Sika toga disease, but I will not talk about fungicide. So another insect, uh, not so economically important, it's called banana skipper or banana leaf roller or so. These are the adult uh, banana skipper. They lay egg in the banana leaf. The eggs are, uh, they lay the whitest single egg and the, the larva will hatch into this kind of caterpillar. So what they does is they roll the leaf and they stay inside feeding the uh, leaf tissue and, 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 and also uh, make, a, make a excreta like this. Not so important. They are usually taken care by natural enemies here in Hawaii. So we don't do anything. Uh, even there, do you see these insect, these kind of symptoms, leaf, leaf rolling or larva in our banana farm. So another important disease in banana is Panama wilt. Uh, it's, a, it's called, its scientific name is Fusarium oxyporium. So this is a fungal disease, mostly wilts, wilts are associated, associated with the bacteria, but this is a fungal disease uh, caused by Fusarium pathogen. As, as, as I tell, told you, soil, fungal, uh, soil borne fungus, the fungus will enter through the root and it blocks the xylem. Uh, it, it, it infects the xylem. So you will see when you cut the banana trunk, pseudo stem, cross section, you will see like these blackened uh, ring of <coughs> xylem. So it, it, it blocks the water movement in the, in, in the plant system. So what you see is there is, there is sudden wilt of banana plant, banana tree, whatever you say. So it, the banana tree will wilt within a few days, maybe in a couple of weeks, you see a very good healthy banana tree, then after a week or 10 days after you see like this kind of symptoms. So luckily we don't have this uh, Fusarium uh, Panama wilt here in Kauai. But it has some kind of history. So, so a long time ago, maybe 30 years ago, so this fungus 
uh, was found in maybe around Panama or in the Panama. That's why it's called Panama wealth. And it destroyed, uh, it's called Gross Mitchell banana industry in the South America. Gross Mitchell is the banana variety or <clears throat> variety. It, it, it's wiped out Gross Mitchell banana industry in South, in South America. So then it was found the Cavendish variety is more resistant to this uh, Panama wolf disease than other varieties. And <clears throat> so, so the, pe the most, most, most banana grow growing area switched to Cavendish. And around maybe, I don't, I don't know what time, but the new race of banana, banana new race of this wolf disease was again showed, showed up in the Southeast Asia and the South South Asia. It's a race TR4. It's a tropical race. Tropical race four. So so then onwards, the, it is destroyed. It's it's infects Cavendish uh, Cavendish uh, banana variety. So then after that, in around 2013, this tropical race was um, detected in the South America. So so after that detection, then uh, we we will feel that this uh, this uh, uh, fusarium is also somewhere around Hawaii as well. So this uh, fusarium wilt was uh, found in a big island in a several occasion, not widely distributed yet uh, in Big Island uh, from long time ago now, but it's not widely distributed. Few okay, in a few occasion in a Oahu as well, but not on Kauai yet. So I think we did uh, a survey for banana uh, Panama wilt uh, sometime like a three, uh, six months ago. So we didn't found any banana wilt symptomatic plant here on Kauai. So if it is present, uh, we need a resistant variety, but until now we don't know what is which one is resistant after Kevin this got susceptibility. And the question uh, that, that popped up early in this uh, this uh, workshop is a uh, banana mart. So this pest is called banana mart, but this it doesn't uh, uh, damage banana by that much. Sometimes the uh, We'll see damage caused by banana mart, and it's only in a few occasions. But they are the best of ornamental plants. There are there is lots of uh, other plants you can take and damage. And there was a question for lure. The lure is in the chat box. And the management, the uh, normally the recommended practice is you need to remove the damaged portion. The damage, uh, the decayed, the, the larva will feed on the crown or uh, on the on the trunk bark so wherever you remove the uh, damaged portion and the, the insect some of the insecticide recommended is bt and and pyrethrine is recommended for these to control these insecticide in general but there might be some stronger ins insecticide as well with that uh, that's my last, last slide if you have questions i 